99 cent red balloons. Hang them up near City Hall with your vote for Occupy, even though they'll pop them all. Oh, got to write Occupy on here, don't I? Okay, marker. See, if we're going to exercise our First Amendment rights, we have to remember this is about communication. So, don't want to just hang a balloon up. Got to put some words on it here. O, C, C, U, P, Y. And I'm going to stick the word vote above that. There we go. Vote Occupy. Oh, let's see. On the other side, um, hmm, speech. Is not a crime. Okay. There you go. So uh, this one goes out to bathrobe Steve. <laughs> Little nickname the uh, occupiers gave him. And him having recently been beaten and arrested for hanging balloons. We'll see if they get the message. If we keep doing it anyway. As a matter of fact, um, I said 99 cent balloons for a reason, actually. Um, here, I don't want to put the um, store name on here because, uh, you know, not about advertising a particular store. But if you look on this, you can see it's actually, there it is, 99.99 cents. So with the tax, I paid $1.09. You get 20 balloons for that. If somebody finds a better deal, please let me know. And uh, shouldn't be that terribly hard for several of us to get a $1 pack of balloons, say, once a month. And just keep this going. do not have to put helium in them. Fill them up with air. Stick a message on them. Put them on the fence. And, uh, well, if anybody wants to call it destruction of property, keep in mind that when the balloon is removed, the property is exactly as it was before. It's not like we're putting paint on it or anything that, you know, damages the property. This is completely removable. All we're doing is making a statement. So, on to my government re reform. Uh, let's see, my keynotes. Um, here, recognize that disapproval is not being counted in elections. This is very important. Now, a lot of the things I have in my keynotes are about recognizing something, not doing something. Near the end, I get more into doing something, but I'll, I'll be getting to recognizing some, uh, I'll be getting to actually doing something in this video. By the way, I am going to make mistakes in this. Uh, this is not scripted. Uh, I'm an actor, but um, I don't have a script, so I'm improvising. And as such, um, there will be some mistakes, and I'm going to leave it completely unedited. So what you see is what I did first try. Okay. When I say that disapproval is not being counted, what I mean is when somebody goes into an election, into the um, voting booths for an election, and they want to say, keep this particular candidate out, or I don't like any of the choices at all, or something to that effect, some form of disapproval. Right now, there is no way of counting that. Um, when, when it comes to elections in the United States, basically we're allowed to vote for someone or shut them up. It's, it's not like we have any real say in the elections anyway. And the reason that that happens is because all of those votes that people have meant to go against the Democratic Party end up being either stay home votes, which is, you know, not counted at all, or vote for the Republican Party. All those who are trying to keep out the Republican Party, did I get that backward? I think I said that right. Those that are trying to keep out the Republican Party are either stay home votes or vote for the 
Democratic Party. Now, I think most people have it figured out already that uh, those who tend to vote Republican, uh, usually the more conservative-minded people, tend to be a little more relentless about it. And they tend to think that those who vote Democratic, um, and I say they, I don't mean everybody, but you know, on the average, it seems that, that they think that um, those that tend to vote Democratic or vote anything other than a Republican really don't care because they don't vote much. And I would like to point out that that is not at all the case, that there are an awful lot of people out there who really do care. As a matter of fact, here, let me get a sign. Just step away for a minute. And this is one of my signs. Yes, we care. Uh, register to vote Occupy. And it means exactly what it says. For those people who would like to say that those who don't vote at every election are showing they don't care, I got news for them. Most of them very much do care. That's why there are so many of us out in the streets complaining. And these are not just liberal-minded people. There are conservatives taking to the streets and complaining as well. I think they're a little slower to do that, but then that's kind of to be expected because the whole you know conservative mindset seems to tend toward uh, liking things to stay the way they are and not responding really quickly to change. So. Um, you know, it's 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 not. This is not meant as an insult, nor is it meant to stereotype. These are things that are documented, and I'm just you know quoting what I've read. Uh, actual studies, brain scans have been done, tests have been done on people, and and these are the the differences they find between conservative and liberal. Um, I don't consider one necessarily to be better than the other. They're just differences in people, and I think there's you know there's a place for us all. There's there's room for all the people in in this world to find their niche in things and um, you know be able to be productive parts of society if society will allow us to be productive and this is the trick that there are an awful lot of people out there who would really like to be productive members of society who have been left behind by a government that's not functioning in the way that it should be so it's the first thing we need to recognize that disapproval is currently not being counted in elections. Next, we need to recognize that a lesser evil vote is still evil. It's not a good thing. So if somebody if somebody's looking at the candidates and they're saying, well, I got this one candidate here that would be a good guy to have in office, but I don't believe he can win. And then they're looking at these other guys and saying, well, these guys are really bad. But one of them is going to win whether I like it or not. So I better vote for the lesser evil to try to keep out the greater evil. What they're doing is they're falling right into a trap. Now, I'm not saying that people should stand by and do nothing. On the contrary, I think it's good that people, a lot of people do, you know, decide that they have to do something. And this is what, what the conservatives do pretty regularly. They, they see generally the liberal guy as being the greater evil, and they relentlessly vote conservative to keep this dangerous liberal guy out. Now, the liberals, on the other hand, they have a tendency to look at the conservative guy and go, this guy is terrifying. But there might be somebody out there who's better than the other guy who might possibly win. So maybe I should just stay home and not vote. This is where I'm saying, make a difference, vote Occupy. Now, if you got somebody you really want to support, whether it's for president, for governor, for uh, Senate, for Congress, mayor, sheriff, city council, whatever, when it comes time to vote, if you actually support someone, by all means, vote for who you support. And if you've got some kind of a plan, like, for example, to vote um, undecided or uncommitted at a, at a caucus for a particular party, and you think that that will best represent what you're trying to say, then by all means do that. I'm just saying, rather than not be heard, vote Occupy. I think that's very important. So, this is where we get into my first step of action. Encourage action which will reduce lesser evil votes. So, for example, vote Occupy. How many positions are there on a ballot? I mean, is the president all we ever get a chance to vote for? I think not. 
So why do we hear all this talk about who we're going to vote for when it comes to the presidency and even more talk about who, who we want to vote against, which we never actually get the chance to do. And people seem to forget about the fact that there are other positions. Well, I don't know about forget. It doesn't get mentioned a lot. So I'm mentioning it. I'm saying, hey, if you have someone to support for president, by all means, vote for that person. Even if you got to write them in, show your support. If you don't think they can win, show your support anyway. Just this one election, please. Because here's the thing. Every election goes by and we wait for the change to happen. And we try really hard to stop the evil from getting in. But we vote for the lesser evil to keep out the greater evil. We're still voting for evil. And it's a matter of opinion which one was the lesser and which was the greater. And people vote based on things like whether the person is pro-choice or pro-life. Well, what do these things really mean? I mean, the pro-choice people call the pro-life people all kinds of names and the pro-life people call the pro-choice people all kinds of names. Is it really, you know, um, anti-life and anti-choice? Uh, the fact of the matter is it doesn't matter. I'm not saying that these are not important issues and I'm not saying that, that they should be decided one way or the other way based on what I feel because it's not about me. But I will say this much, if you have an opinion about such a thing and you're electing a candidate based on that particular candidate's party's stance on that issue. If that, if that party is Demopublican, you might as well forget it. And when I say that, what I mean is the Democratic Republican Party are a tag team. They're one team. It used to literally be one party, legally. Now, somewhere along the way, and somebody has explained the history to me on this, which was interesting because I figured this out without knowing the history. Um, but it was interesting to have it all explained to me in such a way. History is my worst subject, by the way. As it turns out, they were at one point in time officially the same party. And the, the uh, Republican Party was formed by Abe Lincoln, um, basically a breakoff from the Democratic Republican Party, if I understood correctly and recall correctly. You can look this stuff up yourself. So don't like, you know, don't quote me on it. Don't take my word for it. You know, look into these things. But <clears throat> but the Democratic Party, I guess, was originally the Democrat Party. Again, this is all, you know, unscripted. So I could be wrong. But, you know, again, the main thing is if you really look at it, you, you can see the Democratic Party is called a left-wing party. There's no such thing as a left-wing party. Every party has a left wing and the right wing. It's in the linguistics. The right wing of a party does not mean it's on the right-hand side. It does not mean that they're conservative. It does not mean any of the things that it has come to mean in, in American English specifically for the Democratic and Republican Party. Those are an exception. The term right wing refers to the core of a party. Those things that, that are what the party stands for, the things that, that the party has in its statement that, that tell the people what they're all about. And if somebody is right wing, it means that they're as close as possible to the core of that party, to the center of what that party stands for. If they're left wing, they're out there on the outskirts. That's the outside part of the party. It's called the left wing. So if you look at the Democratic Party and the Republican Party, they're really the same thing. I, I picture it sort of as, as a hypersphere with a little bulge in the middle. When I say hypersphere with a bulge in the middle, that's probably not a good explanation because I'm thinking multidimensionally. So I'll put this in two-dimensional terms. Imagine a disc, just a flat disc. And in the middle of the disc, there's a little spherical bubble. You can kind of picture the Democratic and Republican Party that way. The outer rim of this disc and the area... Mm, somewhat inward from that outer rim is what the Democratic Party mostly concentrates on. And the inner part of the disc is what the Republican Party mostly concentrates on. But they're both the same exact thing. The very core of the party, at the very core of the party, of the Republican Party, I should say, you have this little bubble in the middle where things come out in different directions besides the usual disc, which, by the way, they portray to us as a line. So... On this line, we have um, the outskirts at one end of the line. This would be the 
Democratic Party or the Liberals, and at the center we have the Republicans. So or the conservatives. So the conservatives watch the liberals running circles around them and it scares the crap out of them and they tend to be very easily scared people and uh, don't like people to know that they're easily scared because people knowing that would scare them even more. So um, and please if you're a conservative don't take this offensively that's not the way it's intended. If you recognize it as a feature of yourself then fine. If not maybe you're an exception.